Hey everybody, I just want to cover a topic today that I find really interesting and I have a lot of fun with. I love creating names for maps and for my campaign world and stuff like that. And so I just wanted to share with you guys a way of doing it that I learned a long time ago from writers. And I want to recommend that if you're a DM that you read materials for writers and stuff, because after all, you're a storyteller when you're a DM. And often writing advice can directly translate into DM advice because you're both storytellers. The novelist and the DM are both storytellers. So you can find a lot of handy tips and tricks in uh, how-to writing materials and stuff like that, uh, which is what happened. I came, I came across this technique for creating fantasy names and stuff. And so I just wanted to share it with you. Uh, there's two schools of thought with fantasy names that I know of, and one of them is that names should be long and complicated and unpronounceable, and the other one is that names should be short and simple and cool sounding. That's the school I prescribe to. I like uh, realistic sounding names. I like names that are uh, pronounceable as opposed to great, big, long, complicated names. But there's nothing wrong with big, long, complicated names. If that's what you like, then you can certainly uh, make those. I mean, it's your world, right? So, but this technique does work with both kinds of names. Also, uh, I want to cover some of the uh, little uh, other things that I've learned about how names should be created and relate to other areas in a campaign world. So I'm just going to switch over to my other camera here and I'm going to show you using a map and I'm going to create some names just as an example. All right, here we go. Okay, so here I am. I have a blank piece of paper and uh, I'm going to use this map that I drew some time ago just for sort of for inspiration to try and... Uh, figure out a name for a place. So the first place I want to name, let's say, is this island up here. I want a name for that island. So I need to come up with an island name and I want something, I don't know if you can read my writing, hopefully it's not too small. So what you do <clears throat> is you grab a book, any old book. Now you can use uh, a dictionary if you wish, but I find just using random books to be one of the most helpful ways of doing this technique. So all you do is you just grab a word. Now this is a nice word. It's latch key. And you just do it randomly like that. And then I need another word. Uh, how about telling? And let's another one. Uh, greenstone. And well, I don't know. Let's go with board. We want something strange here. So there we've got three. So we've got we've got uh, we've got to break the words into syllables, uh, not really syllables, but but just sections. So we've got lat here from latch key. Uh, we've got C H K, which is uh, a kind of a neat combination though, there. So we could right now here I can see a word right now O A C H K. Ochk. Ochk. Now that, that's kind of a neat name, right? So I like that. So this could be maybe Ochk Island. So now what's happened here is we kind of, all of a sudden, now we know something about our world. Some things are becoming clear. Now I'm going to call this Ochk Island. Ochk Island, which actually, you know what? That sounds too much like Oak Island. So I'm going to scrap that because I think about it. Yeah, and you want to be careful of that, right? You don't want things sounding like too much like stuff. Uh, actually, you know what? Oak Island, I like that. Let's keep it, coming to think of it, because it does sound like uh, Oak Island, and if players notice that, they might come to think that there's a lot of treasure there. And there is a town there. I don't have any reason to think there wouldn't be treasure there. So let's keep it, Oak Island. I like that. So now we need, now we need a name for the town, right? So let's come up... So it's Oach Island. Now we need a name for the town. So instead of going through the same technique with the three and to find that, now we know something about the language. We know that they use OA as a combination. And CHK is a 
uh, element of their language, unless this name throws back to some further time, but I'm going to assume not. So, so what could the town name be? Hmm. Let's see. Now, if I went B-A-C-H, that's obviously Bach, right? So, Ock, which is actually in here, Ock. So, it could be Ock. We could have with the town name. Let's go. Let's just build some. Now I'm doing this right on the fly as I'm as I'm recording this. So if, it, if there's some bad names or or some uh, silly names, you know, I'm I'm doing this just showing you what my technique is. So uh, we have Auckling. That's kind of a neat name. Uh, we have. We have oak, of course. Ock, ock. So, ock, ock would be it. Now, that sounds almost orcish, right? So, let's keep that for orcish. I love it. Ock. All right. So, uh, so now we've learned something here. This is kind of combination. So, we can say that this new language that we're creating, because really that's what's happening here, right? We can say that maybe it has an orcish influence. Okay, so I wanted this to be a human language, but per perhaps there are oak, orcish, orc raiders or something that come through here. And they've influenced the language. And so that's what happens when you're creating names for a campaign world. It's a good idea to remember that languages influence each other, but languages tend to sound very similar. So you want to keep using the same syllables for a little region. But as you move away from that region, you can take on the syllables used by the next region. So let me think these ruins, I'm, I'm thinking maybe these ruins up here were created by orcs. And so there might be orcish names over here. Uh, that actually, that actually might be a name, good name for these ruins. Ock. Bok, ock. Ock. Those could be, the, so I could use some kind of sound like that, but we're still working on the name for our town. Uh, Auckling. I actually like Auckling. Uh, let's see what else. There's Lynn in there too. So let's go Lynn. Ock. Lynn Ock. Or uh, Lin Oak. Now it doesn't always have to have the Oct in there. Sorry, I'm concentrating a little bit here. Could be Teloc. So another thing that, uh, oops, my K's tend to look like H's. Teloc, Teloc. So this could be the island of Oc, and this could be the town of Teloc. Uh, it could be... Let's try C-H-E-L-O-C-H. -E Not H. <laughs> okay. Shellock. Shellock? Shellock. Shellock. <laughs> that wouldn't be a very good name, would it? I actually like Ackling. I think that's a good... Ackling. Ackling. Atchling. A lot of people call it Atchling, but it would be Ackling. So we could also go... Oakling, Oak, Oakling, Oakling. So this could be the town. Oh, I like that, Oakling. All right, so let's call Oakling on Oxch Island. I actually like Oxling. Let's keep that. Let's let's instead of Oxch, let's keep it. Let's go Oxling Island. I like that, Oakling Island instead of Oak Island. We'll keep it Auckling. And I like that because it kind of has a foreign, really foreign sign to it. Maybe a little Nordic. And this is in the northern area of my map here. So maybe 
maybe that would be good. So Auckland Island, I like that. And let's grab another word. I need a little more stuff in here. So how about a name? Isabel. So it says Auckland Island and it's Belloc, town of Belloc. I like it. All right, so there we go. Uh, those are two names I really like, Auckland and Belloc. So the island is Auckland Island, and it's the town of Belloc. See now they sound they sound like they could be the similar they could be the similar languages, right? And I can call these the ruins of Auk. So we have some influence. Maybe this is the ruins of Auknot because it's or Orcish. Maybe that's just some language and this is some old language. And the people that spoke this are now living on this island or they were always living here before this got ruined. So I've, now I've managed to come up with three names. So I've got uh, the ruins of Auk here. I've got uh, Auckling Island here or Oakling Island. Oakling Island, which I really like, and the town of Belloc. So there we go. Three names in a row. Uh, and this is a uh, language, so I want to keep these words that I used. I want to remember them. I used Isabel, Latchkey, Telling, Board. So these are the, these are the three words that I used for this language. So when I want to make up another name, I'll shuffle these around, maybe use these a little bit. Uh, this is also, I've decided this is an older language, so I'll make up, I'll get, grab some words for that one. How about wouldn't? And emphatically, whoa. It doesn't really matter what words I choose. I'm just trying to get my words to have a consistency and a feeling to them. So this is the this is the the ruins of of oak here. So I've got that a little bit. So how about if they call them the ruins of oak, but the actual name of the old of the place was. Uh, Alok, but it got shortened down to the ruins of Ok, that had Alok in it, right? And now I've got some words for the older language here now, and I can remember that. And I'm starting to put together languages here, and as I go to other places, I can start finding other words, maybe pick out a different book and get some different words from there. I've got some old English books, that kind of stuff. And you want it, what you want to do is you want to keep certain word, com certain letter combinations to a particular region. So, so the O-C-H is one that I am keeping to this region. That, or O-C-K. <laughs> Or O C H Oakling. Yeah, O C H. Yeah, that's the one I'm keeping is O C H. Right? I'm gonna keep that. I might keep Ling, I might keep Lat, right? I'm gonna keep these and I'm only gonna use them in that area. And the thing with English, the English has more words in it than any other language, but it also steals more words from every other language in the world. So you can use English this way to create unique sounding regions and areas of a map 
and you can have the names all seem consistent in an area and then as you slowly travel to a new area new consistencies will start to show up and you'll start getting different names and stuff anyway i just thought i would uh so share this with you guys i uh, hope you find it helpful i absolutely love naming things this turns it into almost like a game it is so much fun to do this to come up with new maps and stuff and try and you know i need a name for the map i need a name for all these different towns it's it all of a sudden it just becomes really fun as you start mapping out the languages and the regions and how the languages moved around and how the languages influence each other so i'll have very strong in one area i'll have very strong use of the sounds for a certain language but then as it moves out other and i figured out an area here as the two come together i'll start mixing them a little bit and you can literally sound like with with my campaign worlds as you travel through if you if you pay attention to the words and stuff you can tell when you're getting towards a border you can tell when you're getting to a different area of, of a land because the words will start to change a little bit or the names will start to change a little bit as you see influence from a new land starting to emerge and that is just so much fun and it's very strong in fantasy uh for uh, Lord of the Rings, for example, J.R.R. Tolkien, that was, he wrote his books so he could make languages. That's how much fun this can be. I mean, think about that. Lord of the Rings actually came about because of his, lang because of his la love for languages, right? So, I mean, it, this is, this is, it, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the most fun parts of creating a new campaign world is naming things. So yeah, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please uh, please like it and please subscribe. I'll be making more of these videos as time goes on. I'm trying to make a video every day. So if you want to leave a like and subscribe, that would be awesome. You can visit me at msjmaps.com. I'm looking into uh, putting these maps and stuff available on there for high-res download and things. I'm just investigating how to change that over. So I think that'll be pretty exciting. And so that's it. I hope you found this uh, interesting. I hope you can use it and I hope you have fun naming things in your campaign world. All right, until tomorrow.